All right, so if you know me or follow my channel, you'll know that I deal with a lot of weird, odd little cars, like our Berkeley here or the Renault Le Car, Renault 5, or the Honda 600, the blue one there, or any of those odd little cars that are populated here through my, my life and my parking lot. But recently we had the unique opportunity to borrow a huge vehicle from our friends, a motorhome, and we took it on a two, two and a half week tour across the West and we had a great time. And a couple people asked me, would I do a detailed a kind of in-depth on the motorhome, like show technical stuff. And I don't know if that's what everybody wants, but I thought that this being the last day we're gonna have the motorhome, we're returning it to our friends um, soon, that this is a good time to show the details. This is a 2018 Thor Ace motorhome. It is equipped with a V10 Ford Triton engine. It's a 6.8 liter engine. It has plenty of power, I can say, from driving this thing 3,300 miles. I never once needed to floor it. It has great torque, just right about 1,500, 2,000 is where it spent most of its time. It has a six speed electronic automatic transmission with braking. In other words, it senses somehow when you're going down a hill, it'll sh upshift to the next gear, gear for upshift, I'm sorry, downshift to a lower gear to help with the brakes. It, it does have disc brakes all the way around. And let's get into some technical details about this thing. I'm gonna open the hood, which is in the front here, and show you what you can see. Um, it's pretty well designed for a motorhome. I am not a motorhome guy. This is the biggest vehicle I think I've ever driven. Like I say, I'm more into these little guys here. And the driving differences from this thing, which is like a semi-truck, to one of the little cars is huge. So let's start a little walk around tour and we'll show you what this motorhome has to offer. All right, so we're taking an outside tour of our 2018 Thor motor coach or motor home. It's a Thor Ace. I can't tell if it's a 2017 or 2018. It seems like it's compiled of 2017 parts, but it, I believe it's registered as a 2018. So I, I don't know if I just said this, but I went around the motor home completely and I unlocked all the storage cabinets, all the storage compartments, and we're going to go through them one by one and just kind of give you an idea of what it's like to own, live with, or Maybe you're potentially thinking about purchasing a motorhome like this. First off, I should say that all the compartments are locked, every one, even the hood, all the compartments. So there's, there's a, I think five keys that go with the motorhome, but let's start under the hood, or I should I say in the front, you can see this front trunk or front hood basically just comes up and out. It is all fiberglass in there. It's kind of interesting. And what we're looking at here is the engine and some of the uh, necessary components. I'll go through them one by one. We'll start over here. This is the battery for starting. It's not the house battery. Um, we've got our air conditioning and heating HVAC system up here. This is the uh, heater core and the air conditioning core and all the uh, electronics that go along with it. Uh, we have our coolant here. You can see it's at the, uh, the height that it should be for normal operation. We would add oil to the engine here. Uh, the air filter is here, easily accessible. I just changed it. It draws in cool air through this big duct here and also has a drain hole in case it ever gets water in there. Looking down here, we've got a, a assortment of coolers. We'll start from the bottom. This is a power steering cooler. This one is a transmission cooler, this great big huge one here. Behind it is the air conditioning cooler, and behind that is the radiator. The transmission fill, transmission fill tube is here. If you have to add automatic transmission fluid, it takes, uh, I believe, the latest generation Ford fluid, which is synthetic. The fuse box for everything is here. And then if you look up behind, this is the windshield wiper mechanism. And then we've got the power brakes. 
and then our power steering fluid container, which is huge. This thing is really heavy. We took it across the scales and it weighs 16,000 pounds, fairly light. In other words, without a lot of uh, water weight. And this is the temperature sensor that shows you the outside temperature for the dash. Your windshield washer fluid is there. Horn back over there has a tiny little meep meep horn. And if you look at the inside, how this is constructed, it is fiberglass and it's kind of rough in here, but that's just the way they are. This motorhome does have daytime running lights. It has LEDs that light up uh, whenever the ignition is on. And if the emergency brake is off, then the daytime running lights become this headlight. And I believe this is a high beam. They work really good at night. Again, I'm showing you and telling you from experience from driving this thing 3,300 miles and living with it for two weeks. It is very top heavy, I'll tell you that. Uh, in gusty situations, this is just a big box going down the road and going through Idaho and Utah. Whenever we hit crosswinds, I was really dialing in the, the lean on the steering wheel to make it work. What's nice is there are cameras all around here. You can see this? There's a camera here and one on the other side and there's also a rear view camera. The mirrors are two part. One is a bubble and the other is your normal viewing mirror. But this, these are really nice to have. Um, I could see a lot of the, the outside of the road beyond me because it's such a big vehicle. And whenever you turn the turn signals on inside the vehicle, left turn signal, the screen will show you what's behind here uh, via the camera. It's really nice. So let's go and look at all the luggage compartments and di dictate what they are and what they do. This one here beneath the driver, I should say, is your propane. You would add your propane here. You have your valve for turning it off here. And there's a gauge uh, right here where a little, about, a little less than three quarters. So that's nice, very easily accessible. And what's interesting is this is the only compartment that's not lockable. I don't know why that would be. You'd think somebody could steal your propane. We'll go to the compartment just beyond the propane, which is a lockable compartment. And we have in this one water hoses. And there's a bunch of storage that goes all the way through to the other side, just beyond this towel. I'm going to take the towel out. You can see all the way to the other side for like a ladder. Um, this is our fresh water hose uh, with a filter so that when we stop at an RV park, you can plug into or tap into a water tap and have filtered water and it's the white hose which doesn't taste like a rubber garden hose. There's also, uh, let's see, the controllers for the slide out is here and the slide out being this big pop out right here. I'll get to that in a little bit. Each one of these compartments has uh, lights that light up so at night you can undo your belongings, whatever you might have in here. Really a neat setup. We'll go to the uh, compartment beyond the fresh water storage and we've got our sewer pipes. Um, these are our black and gray water sewer pipes. We have two pipes we can hook together. This is the drain for the kitchen sink. In other words, when you use the kitchen sink in the motorhome, this is the tank that's, that holds the water for that. There are three different drains, sewer drains for this vehicle, and they're all contained within the vehicle, which is nice. There's also a hot water shower here if you're on the beach and you decide that you want to rinse your, your feet off, you can just use this to rinse your shoes, rinse your feet. We didn't use that, but that's really nice. Let's move on to the next compartment. Oh, I should say for plugging in, if you're at a campsite and you need to plug in, this is the 30 amp. 125 volt and there's one for an extension cord just below it what's nice about this is when you know that you're plugged in and you take the plug and you kind of twist it to lock it this little moon lights up blue to make sure that you know that you're hooked up there's a couple times i had to wiggle it to get just right and when that lights up blue you know you've got coach power the compartment beyond that one this is the nasty one <laughs> i shouldn't say that it actually is pretty cool um, this is your toilet sewage, the big one here, and this is the valve, how you would pull that and drain it. And this is your gray water from the shower, I believe. 
and the sink in the bathroom. And if you look at these wires here, there's, these are level sensors. You can see how they go up. I don't know if you can see that. The red one back there is up higher. It tells you on a control panel inside the coach what your, your fluid level is. So if you've got a full black water tank, you need to know you're going to dump before you overflow it. Really cool. Pretty well set up. Okay, we'll move on to the next compartment. This is your generator. So this is a gas-powered Cummins. I'm assuming it's a 4,000 watt generator. It does amazing things. It'll charge the batteries for the coach. If you're off-grid for more than a day, you will need to run this a little bit. Um, it runs the TVs inside and all the, the cool things. It is the power supply when you're living off-grid if you're not plugged in. And above that, there is another compartment and this one could be used for multiple things. It's, a, it's pretty well decorated. In other words, it's finished. Also has a light. We put our electric cords in there for, and adapters for different types of camping. Let's move on to the other side. We've got a ladder that goes up top. There's nothing up there except access to get to the roof vents. Of course, the fuel tank is there. It's, I believe, 75 gallons. It holds a lot of fuel. And we have a trailer hitch down below. Trailer hitch also has lights and brakes if you so well uh, would like to pull a Jeep or pull something to the car. It says it's got an 8,000 pound capacity. I don't know. I don't think you can hurt the gas mileage by pulling whatever you want. The exhaust pipe there is for the generator. On this side of the coach, we'll start in the very back here with this compartment. We'll open this one up and this is just a normal storage compartment it goes all the way through again so you can put long things through there fishing poles closet rods whatever you want i had this one for tools a nice little compartment the next compartment here sort of similar we put our dry goods in here food mostly it was easy to get because it's getting close to the door a little bit of storage in there and when I say close to the door, it's nice to have your dry goods here if you just want to run in, it's cold outside or raining or what have you, uh, to cook with. And that brings me to this compartment. This one's really neat. So we had our soda and beer in here because you can open this little side door and that goes right into the coach. So you could be driving along and say, hey, honey, will you get me a beer? And she could run without opening the doors Come down these little stairs, open this slide thing, grab a beer out of here, and you can drink it while you're driving. No, you're not supposed to do that. We do that with sodas. The beers we did when we were parked. Let's move on to the next compartment. This one has the barbecue in it and the wood for making a fire. Also, I think I showed you, that goes all the way through to the other side, so if you have long items, you can store them there. And again, all the compartments are lit. So a lot of storage compartments here. And this is getting down to the end. This is a maintenance department, I guess you'd call it. The coach batteries are located here with fuses and stuff. You can see all the way through the coach to the wheel well on the driver's side. And these are the pumps and the fluid levels for the jack system, the leveling system for the coach. And I'll go through that in a little bit as well. Okay, we've made it to the last compartment. And you may ask, what is this compartment here? You see this, there's a speaker there and there's a speaker there. Have any clues what that compartment could be? It's in the middle of the coach, it's pretty cool. Let's open it up and see. It's sprung, in other words, it's uh, opens by um, the little gas-powered shocks, and there's a TV there. Isn't that funny? We never used it. I suppose somebody could. You could put up the awning on a nice summer's evening and watch TV from your campsite. I think that's a little extravagant, but uh, nonetheless, it's part of the coach. So we'll close that up, and um, let's get into some more technical stuff here. Okay, so I closed up all the doors. I forgot to mention that I believe this is a propane hookup here. Should you decide to uh, have a camp stove and you need to plug into the propane source of the vehicle, 
I think you can connect to that. That's super cool. I may or may not have mentioned that there's disc brakes all the way around. The rears are duals and they're 19.5 inch RV tires. They're big heavy duty things. You can feel it when you drive it. Uh, the exhaust for the furnace is here and the refrigerator and I think maybe the wa hot water heater which are also propane powered are here. Uh, the furnace works really good. Um, let's get through the furnace while we're thinking about it. The furnace is in this area here beneath this, um, I guess the refrigerator area. The thermostat for the furnace is right there. It is propane powered and the heat for the furnace comes out of these vents as well as one in the bathroom. I'll show you that. Beneath the toilet, there is a furnace vent. And I can't show you this one because the pop-out's not out, but there's a furnace vent in the bedroom. Those are the only furnace vents for the whole vehicle, but that furnace works really well. On a 20 degree morning, it cranks really nice. I should also say that right here at the beginning, as you enter the vehicle, are all the main switches. So you've got the switches for the lights, in other words, indoor, let's see here. I gotta get this right, the awning, the step light, which would be this light beneath the step or that shines on the step. And then also uh, the step uh, electronics for this, the uh, step that goes in and out. Whenever you open or close the door, the step disappears and you can turn that off. If you're coming in and out of the door a lot, you can actually turn the step off so that you're not running the battery down or the, the motor doesn't wear out. And there's something else I gotta show you too. There's storage under the steps. Really thought out. Little drawers all over the place. Okay, let's keep going. All right, so we're continuing on with our motor home uh, walk through evaluation, you might say. And I forgot to mention a couple things. When you stop at a campsite and they have running water, you can hook up your hose to this bib right here and you can turn off the water pump inside and have running water from a city connection. And right next to this is your hot water heater. This is where the hot water heater is. It's underneath the kitchen sink, I believe. And again, this whole, I can show you this, this whole area right here, this whole thing is a big bump out, it bumps out about two feet. And there's an awning on the top there that covers the roof if it's raining it doesn't allow water or moisture to go into the bumped out portion. It's an automatic awning that comes out with that bump out and also the bedroom bump out, which is in the back here. And let's go inside and I'll show you how those, how those work. I walk around to the other side to go in the motorhome. I forgot to mention, this is the storage water for drinking water. You would fill this up at a campsite for the onboard water. In other words, the water that you contain there's a storage tank in here for fresh water, for washing dishes and flushing toilets, that type of thing. So let's come on in the coach. And we went through the switches down below here. There's also another switch I forget to mention that if you leave the coach, you can press it, this button and it turns off all the electricity for the whole coach so that no battery is drained, if that makes sense. And again, beneath here is our little slide compartment where you can keep dry goods cold, like sodas and beers. Um, this is not heated or anything. It is exposed to the outside elements, except for weather. Uh, but it's a neat way to pass through to get through something you want from the food store. Above this cabinet is your main control panel. You have uh, a couple different things here. You can start the generator by pressing this button, and then it tells you when the generator is running. Let's just do that now. Oh, didn't start. Let's try again. There it goes. And it tells you how many hours the generator has been running and lets you know that it's on. And then you also have the, uh, the slide extender for this whole kitchen area, basically for everything from this wall right here 
all the way over to there, the whole thing slides out. And it goes out two feet, which gives quite ample space to cook and clean. And it's funny, I actually did this while my wife was cooking on the stove. I pushed it out, and so she had to walk with her pot. It was kind of funny. Uh, the stove is propane as well, and it works really well. Propane oven, propane stove. Oh, there's biscuits in there. We left biscuit. I'm glad I saw that. Okay, getting back to the control panel here, we have uh, a variety of switches. Let's go through them. I, I mentioned the slide extender, which pushes out this whole bump out. There's the water pump. So if you want to water and you're off grid, the pump pumps water. In other words, so that you have tap water to turn on the faucets. You can turn off your LP gas, which is your propane, and you can turn on or off your 110 volt. In other words, if you're plugged in, or I think maybe it's outside. This part up here is the coolest part because you can check all the levels of everything. So you can check your propane. We have a full propane tank, or almost full, three quarters. We can check your batteries, which is the coach batteries. You can check your fresh water tank, the black water tank, and the gray water tank, and the other gray water tank. So that's really neat. And that comes in really handy when you're camping because you don't know when you need to dump or if you need to dump. So we'll turn the generator off because that is just making noise. Okay, that's off. And then we'll go over here to the fridge, which is a nice little fridge. It is off currently, and you can turn it on to auto, which will take both electric power and or propane. It will choose which one it needs to cool. Turn that off for now. You can actually put it on a full gas if you want propane only. And then set your desired cold temperatures. Let's make sure there's no biscuits in there. Nope, there's not. There's ample storage throughout the home. Lots of great storage. The one thing we didn't use is the air conditioner. There is an air conditioner unit in the roof and there are vents throughout the whole coach. I'm assuming that these all blow cold air. We didn't use them. We did use the fans a couple times. And to use the fans, you got to crank open the, the lid like this. And you'll turn the fan on here. It has different stages. Fan off. And you shut the lid. There's a couple of those throughout the coach. There's one in the bathroom, one in the back, and then one here. There are lights everywhere. Let's see if I can turn these on. Under the cabinets, above the dining room table, throughout the whole home. Let's see if I can turn these on here. There we go. And they're nice and bright. Same thing with on this side. There's lights. Speakers. These speakers are off of the entertainment center in the front. And this is pretty cool. Let's see if I can fire this up for you. This is your screen for your rear camera and the radio. Let's turn that off. Uh, your heating controls for the front here. In other words, for defrost, air conditioning for the driver. It all works really, really great. Now, if you climb into the driver's seat, one of the neat features about this is the self-leveling system. If I have the keys with me anymore, uh, I need to get the keys. Okay, so I grabbed the keys for the self-leveling system and I forgot a couple things. These bucket seats swivel so that you can put a table in that post hole right there and you can play cards. So these, both the passenger seat swivels around, the driver's seat swivels around. And when this pushes out, you can have a big party in here. One more thing, too. This bunk above, show you here. This completely rises up and folds up. And I'll show you that in a while. We had it down because the kids liked being up there. But let's see if I can show you the self-leveling system. First of all, you got to turn the ignition on. 
and start the vehicle. And then you got to put the e-brake on, which is right here. Once the e-brake is on, you can come over to this panel here, turn the self-leveling system on, and then start the system. And I'll show you how this works. It's really cool. The jacks are coming down. I can hear them. And it's trying to level the motorhome automatically. So we've got the jacks down light on. It's pushing up. Whoa. It is a little bit abrupt, but it is trying to find level. And when it finds level, this light will light up green in the center here. You can manually override it by going front, left, whatever, right, rear. But it'll tell you when it's done. And once it is done, we'll go outside and we'll check to make sure that it's all level. Oh. If you're on a really steep campsite, it can only do so much. We found the limits a couple times. Okay, so the green light is on. We are level. Let's go outside. I'm turning the car off. Okay, so if you notice the space in the wheel well here between the top of the tire and the bottom of the fender, you can see all the way out to the other side. And we're looking for these big hydraulic jack rams that have come down. You see those there? They have leveled the vehicle. They've actually raised it up quite a bit. So the jacks are down. The vehicle is level and you're ready to camp. Now the reverse is the same for bringing the jacks in. Let's do that. You turn the car back on. You press the emergency brake. You turn on the leveling system. And you hit all jacks. Retract. It groans and makes some noises as the jacks are retracting and it's pulling up each of the jacks. Pretty cool. When it's done, the light will light up. I think it's done. Let's go check. So as we look to the back here, all the jacks are up and in their place, the way they should be. Yep, they're up. Now sitting in the driver's seat, we have a couple of things I'd like to show you. I'm gonna turn the car on again. We have a bit of a computer here on the side. We can check our information. Let's get this right in here. So it's 79 degrees outside right now, which is the warmest it's been in a while. We have 611 miles to empty on about, oh, three quarters of a tank of fuel. Yeah, I've seen it as high as 750, but it depends on your mileage. Engine hours, trip. That's how many miles we went on our trip. Pretty cool there. Of course it has cruise control, tilt wheel, and what I wanted to show is you turn the turn signal on. Let's see here. So I don't know if you can see that or not. That's my left turn signal. That's the right turn signal. It's showing the door there. I thought there was a bump out. And then you can go to the camera back I think here once the turn signal's off and you can do the rear as in backup so that's directly behind the vehicle that was really helpful this is a big rig it does have a really nice panoramic windshield and you sit quite far away I can barely reach as far I mean there's still two feet to go um, and at night you can pull the curtains to close up for privacy there are lights here that can turn on and all the specs for the vehicle are right there. The box is a nice touch. It basically flips out and makes a table for my navigator or for the passenger to plug in their laptop or whatever type of entertainment you'd like there. Really a neat feature. This is a side berth here. It pulls out 
and makes a bed like that. You can't be too tall, but you're not going to complain. You're camping. This tabletop goes down, it lowers, and we can put a cushion across there to make another bed. There's a bed up top there, above the seats. And then, of course, there's a king size bed in the back. Once you push the pop out, this whole thing extends, and there's a full king size bed back there with infotainment and a TV right there. Pretty sweet. There's ample storage and lots of fun. Next to the bedroom, of course, is a full size closet. There is a tabletop for the front up there. Full closet to hang your sport coat or your dress and to put your shoes and the cubbies down below. Let's take a look at the bathroom. Pretty neat little bathroom, I would say. It has a normal, I shouldn't say normal, a typical RV toilet with a ball flush, a light, of course, a heat vent, a skylight in the shower, and a tight but usable shower. There is a vent in the ceiling, an air conditioning vent, a fresh air vent, and some storage above for our RV toilet paper that cost us $10 during the pandemic. A neat little sink, storage beneath, and even storage beneath the tub for your dog bowls and dog water needs. Really neat. Forgot to mention that if you are in the bedroom with the king size bed and you want total privacy, you can close the door completely or there is a private screen on curtains that you can pull across on this track. Very neat. You have lots of options. And there's a microwave, lots of overhead storage for plates and dishes. Not a full-size sink, but pretty close and neat storage all along. ready to go camping <laughs> all right I'm gonna back on out of here I think I've given you a pretty good tour hopefully you're not bored it's a pretty interesting vehicle it's a marvelous vehicle it's quite a machine and it's just fabulous for a family of four on a road trip vacation I hope you enjoyed if you have any questions of something I didn't cover I might be able to answer them in the comments below all right, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next video. Oh, I forgot to mention, this motorhome is a 27.2 foot motorhome. They make them bigger, but that is exactly what it is. And we netted about seven to eight miles per gallon on 3,300 miles. So be prepared to pay for a lot of gas, depending on how much you drive. All right, thanks for watching.